Hello everyone, my name is Cole and in this video I just want to show you some of the cool things that I added in the new update for my VR sword system. Cool, so the first thing is I added smooth locomotion to the uh, system and that means you can now move around with your analog sticks on your controllers. Let me show you that quickly. So I can basically just sit in my chair now and I can actually move around with my analog stick. On the, the left analog stick moves you around, the right analog stick is a snap rotation that you can set the angle of. I'll show you just I'll show you that just now. And then you can still click in the sticks to teleport around. Cool. So let's look at those settings real quick. Um, so if we select the pawn and you go down to default, you'll see there's a use teleport, use smooth locomotion, and use snap rotation checkbox you can check now. Um, and you can activate any of these or deactivate them if you don't want to use them. Um, so if you only want to uh, enable teleportation, you can just click use teleport. Uh, I had all of them enabled now, so you can move around with the sticks and you can also use teleportation. Uh, you can set the movement speed over here and you can set the rotation angle over there as well. So plain, simple, straightforward. Uh, for the teleport to work in your scene, you just need to make sure that you have a nav mesh uh, added to your scene. If you press P on your keyboard, um, it'll show you where you'll be able to teleport with this green uh, areas over here. So let me just remove this nav mesh. If you want to add a nav mesh, just search for nav mesh bounds volume. You can drag that into your scene and make sure it overlaps the area that you want to be able to teleport to. So let's do it like that. You can just scale it up a bit. There we go. And now let's drop a box or something into that quickly. So as you can see, um, it'll automatically refresh the bounds as soon as something uh, moves within the bounds. Um, so at the moment we won't be able to teleport, teleport onto the box unless the box is within the, the surface of the box is within that bounds volume. So if you want to be able to teleport onto the box as well, we can just scale this on the Z axis. There we go. Now we'll be able to teleport onto the box as well. Cool. So let's delete that. Cool. And as a bonus, I added a new sword to the system as well. And this one is called the plasma sword. I would have called it a lightsaber. But just to be safe, I don't want any copyright infringements or anything. Uh, I decided to call it a plasma sword, but we all know what it actually is. So let's look at that real quick. Cool. So I've got that over here. By default, it won't be activated. If you pick it up and if you look at the instructions, you'll see there's a activate, deactivate plasma sword, A or X. So it's the A or the X button, depending on which hand you are holding it in. So we can press A, now it's activated, we have some nice effects when it touches things, we can slice stuff, and you can deactivate it again. And it's also two-handed. I have a two-handed and a one-handed version of the sword. They're exactly the same, except the two-handed one you can hold with two hands, obviously, and the one-handed one can only be held in one hand. Uh, we've got some variations to that as well, some settings you can adjust. Uh, let's just press P again to take the nav mesh away. Uh, we've got two variations, it's just two different looks. We can adjust some of the colors on the sword itself. Let's make this one blue-ish. And then you can set the plasma color as well. So let's make that blue. And if you want to see what it looks like in the editor, you can click Start Activated at the very top. Let's just press G on your keyboard to go into Game View. And we'll be able to see it a bit better. Whoops, sorry. So now we've got a nice blue shine to it. We can adjust it to be anything you want. Cool, so that's the Plasma Sword. One last thing that I've added, I've added a couple of requests for people on uh, HTC Vive sometimes and sometimes on the Valve Index as well. 
uh, that the hand orientation is a bit off. So what would happen on the specific headsets, the hand will be either pointing upwards or downwards or won't be lined up with the motion controller's actual location properly. And that made it feel a bit off. Uh, so to fix that, you can go into Pawn, uh, double click motion controller swords blueprint on the viewport. Let's just go a bit closer. Um, if you see, if you check now, you'll see there's a new component called offset component. And you can make your adjustments to the location and rotation of this component. So if we, let's say your hand was rotated uh, upwards like this when you held your uh, controller straight forward, you can just come in here and adjust it so that it's pointing a bit down. Or if the location was a bit off, you can make some adjustments to the location and everything will update and work fine when you do it like this. For the Unreal Engine 5 version that I released now as well, um, I had to make some adjustments because the orientation was a bit off for some reason. Cool. Uh, yes, and like I said, the I have an Unreal Engine 5 version now as well. I still prefer the Unreal Engine 4 version as the physics in Unreal Engine 4 just seems a little bit more precise to me than Unreal Engine 5 at the moment. Um, I don't know if they're still working on some of the, the, the issues and so on, but uh, objects tend to pass through one another a little bit easier in Unreal Engine 5 than in Unreal Engine 4. So it just seems a little bit more precise. So if there's not, not something specific to Unreal Engine 5 that you need, I would recommend still using Unreal Engine 4.27 uh, for VR stuff and especially for my system as well. Cool. Uh, I hope that's everything. Uh, if there's anything, anything that's unclear or you're wondering about anything, please let me know and I'll be happy to help you out as far as I can. Thanks again and have an awesome day.